everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. My name is Sammy and on this channel we do DIYs with signs and there are tons of laughter. So you guys, let's go ahead and get into the DIYs. I am also collabing with Kathy Jo DIYs today. Y'all are going to love her. We're going to talk about her a little bit later in the video, so let's get going. Here's our first DIY. We're gonna take this embroidery hoop. I got a bunch of these on Facebook Marketplace for like $5 or something. Um, we are also gonna grab some burlap. You could get this at Walmart, any of your craft stores, burlapfabric.com, I mean, anywhere. So um, for these embroidery hoops, they come in two pieces and that is gonna help hold our fabric and our lace. So I do decide to put the lace in. So we're gonna take the top off lay it over and then we're going to put the top back over this okay then you're going to pull that you want that tight because you don't want it to sag you're going to tighten up your embroidery hoop again now taking um scissors i am just cutting this down so i can hot glue it inside the embroidery hoop so you don't have a bunch of extra hanging out there for everybody to see now, I don't know if there's an easier way to do this. This is just what I found worked for me. This was my first time ever making one of these, so this is what I did. Make sure to put finger protectors on. Look at me, I even used the fingers that the finger protectors were on. I like to use the other fingers all the time. All right, so after we're done with that, oh, that looks crooked now. Okay, so now taking these wood slice beads I got on Amazon, they are in my Amazon, ugh, Amazon description. Oh my gosh, my description box, the Amazon link's in there. Okay, there, that's what I was trying to say. So if you're like me, I have to line everything out first before I could commit. I have to see it. I need the visual before I can commit. So after lining them up, I'm just hot gluing them one by one. We're gonna do that all the way around. What's nice about the embroidery hoop is you have that thickness to attach these onto. So it works so well. And then um, taking this welcome piece, this was from Dollar Tree in the three pack. I think it was during fall. I just spray painted that blue. Then I hot glued that over our ribbon now I'm taking plaster by Waverly. I'm gonna paint all of those beads white. I am not getting the embroidery hoop, um, just the beads. And at first I was gonna leave it the natural wood color, but with the ribbon there, I felt like it needed it. Like it needed that extra little pop. So I was actually really happy with it. And now taking these blue roses, I am gonna go spray paint them. I am gonna spray paint them blue. It works out amazing look at how pretty those came out all right now i'm taking some lambs ear from walmart zip ties if you guys watch my channel you know zip ties are my jam when it comes to florals and bows they are so easy to use you can reuse the florals they hold everything in place i love them so i took three different zip ties to secure it in the middle and on the sides the lambs ear at walmart is two of these pieces basically for a dollar two dollars no yeah two dollars and next i'm going to take those roses i spray painted and i am just going to glue these and for whatever reason these were sticking so nice to the lamb's ear like material and no problems with it at all so after playing around with placement i'm going to hot glue everything on here now when you're doing these and you guys the, the little white ones for fillers are German status. They almost look like dried, kind of like tissuey like flowers, but they're great for fillers. Um, just make sure when you're doing projects like this, play around with placement before you commit. And that's it, you guys. That That's all there is to this wreath. It was so easy. And I love the way that it came out. Excuse my head as usual. And you can tie a piece of twine to the top, but this hung very well, just as is. So let me know what you think about it. It was my first time doing one of these um, beaded hoops, but I really liked it. I really liked trying the spray paint over the flowers. It worked great. All right, y'all, that was the first DIY. I really hoped you enjoyed it. Today I wasn't really going for a theme. Kathy and I, you know, a lot of the times when you watch collabs, they are themed, you know, both 
people are doing the same thing. But I really just wanted to focus on things that we love, things that inspire us. And my DIYs today are just things that like I've seen that maybe have inspired me that I've been wanting to create or try myself. And I told Kathy, you know what? You do you, girl. Like you make something that really represents you and what you stand for and what you love creatively. So I hope you guys enjoy these DIYs today. I also, you guys, I am so, so close to 50,000 subscribers, 50,000. And I started last June here on YouTube and I seriously could not be here without all of you. And if you guys can do me the greatest honor by liking and subscribing, if you guys have not already done so, share whatever it is, share, share, share to help get me to 50,000. I would so much appreciate it. I feel so lucky to have my community. Y'all know I absolutely adore y'all. So thank you. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for getting me this far along in my journey. <sighs> And with all of that stuff, all right, you guys, I'm going to tell you more about Kathy Jo later in the video, and let's just go ahead and get on with the next three DIYs. All right, the next one. I don't know if this one's my favorite or the first one is. Let, let me know which one's your favorite out of this video. So taking a bamboo cutting board, we're going to start with that. We're going to start with, we're going to use some more of the slice beads. Now these slice beads, ooh, I'll have to put the sizes because they are different sizes. So at first I thought I was gonna go around this whole board with these sliced beads. However, once I lined them up on the top and the bottom, I was like, oh, I, I like this vibe, I'm, I'm digging this. So I decided to go this route and I'm just gonna hot glue all of these on here. And uh, you can use wood glue, you could use super glue, whatever preference, but hot glue and wood, they, they're besties. They do very well together. All right, so after I'm done gluing all those, I'm gonna take this wall base from Dollar Tree. You can also get these at Hobby Lobby, wait till they go 50% off and they're very inexpensive. So after I finally get that darn sticker off, oh my gosh, that took forever. I'm gonna take the wood beads, I'm gonna sporadically put them on there. At first I thought I was going to line them up with the edge, but I was like, no, this reminds me of like one of those like milk vases, you know, I don't know. So taking the wood beads, I'm gonna do half super glue and then on the other half, I'm putting hot glue. We all know that uh, hot glue and metal, they don't dig each other, they don't like each other. So we have to mix that super glue in there so that we ensure that it stays onto the metal. So after I'm done doing all that, we are gonna get Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint. And I am gonna go around, uh, oh sorry, I'm gonna start with this one first. Now, I don't know why I use this paintbrush because I end up changing the paintbrush anyways. But I'm gonna get a stenciling brush from Dollar Tree is what I'm gonna switch over to so that I can get in on the sides of those beads, make sure that they're all covered up. But when I started doing that, gosh, so did I want to show you all of this painting? How boring am I? Come on, move on. There we go, okay, stencil brush in action. So I'm doing like a pouncing, almost like a stippling effect to make sure I get full coverage on those slice beads. And then to keep the stippling effect, I just go over the paint and it actually creates like this kind of texture, which I really liked. Uh, so I was just explaining to you what I was doing there. So you weren't like, why is she bouncing that all over her sign? All right, so after that's done, we're gonna take the wall base and I am going to paint the top of this. Don't worry about the back cause it's not gonna show. And I'm gonna leave the inside um, silver because we're gonna use grays with this. So I thought it went very well. So I'm gonna, con I cannot talk. Continue doing the sides. Why do you use that brush? You know it already doesn't work, but you're gonna do it anyways, right? All right, now taking the stencil brush that we know works, I am just gonna cover all of this up. I only do one coat of paint then I am distressing it down with my steel gray chalk paint. Again, preference, if you guys don't like distressing, leave it just your basic, simple color. Okay, 
So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna hit the sides. And once you hit the sides, it almost looks like the steel is like kind of popping through, which I really like. Okie dokie, artichoke. Now taking our vinyl. I got this image straight from Cricut Design Space. I did not design it myself. And I am just using gray permanent vinyl. It says life is short, live it. I just, I absolutely loved it when I saw it. All right. Taking this wood um, backing, I am going to distress some gray on this just to kind of make it all vibe together. These you can get at Michael's for so cheap when they go on clearance. I think I found a bunch of these like a few summers back. They were 70% off. I think they were like $3 or something like that. And I bought a bunch of them. All right, so now we are gonna put all of this together here. Oh, look at how cute that looks. Okay, so I'm gonna take, I think it's one fourth inch screws and you could see the holes are already in that wall base tin thing for us. So I just screw it right in. It's great because it's added security. And then I'm just going to hot glue the sign straight onto the wood here. It already has a backing on it, like a hanger. It's just a twine hanger. And uh, now I'm gonna show you how I ended up decorating it, which is super simple. I just added some lamb's ear in here and look at how gorgeous this looks. I mean, and it goes with any kind of decor. You could change the florals out as the seasons change. I mean, I really, really love this. Let me know what y'all think about this DIY. Okay, you guys, Kathy Joe DIYs. Let me tell you, if you guys love my personality and think I'm funny, you are literally going to pee your pants when you go onto Kathy Joe's channel. This girl is so funny. She has such an amazing personality. She is such a kind-hearted woman. And y'all, her DIYs are so great. Uh, she does do a lot of farmhouse. Um, but you guys, I promise you won't be disappointed. So make sure to go check out the link for her channel and for today's video down in my description box and let her know that Sammy sent you her way. All right, for this next one, I was inspired by these tile pieces that Teresa sent me and they didn't fit on anything. So I got the boxes. These are the ones that have like the drawers in them from Dollar Tree and I just hand drew on them. Um... I did do two, but this one I'm just gonna show you. I took, these are actually 3D fabric paints from Arteza, and I am just basically following what I did. Now you can use any puff paints. Dollar Tree even sells puff paints. I do like the Arteza ones though because they come out very thin. They don't get those air bubbles, which you know if you've used puff paint before can totally kill a project if you have that like ball of air that comes out and shoots the puff paint, it's horrible. So I am just tracing all of this out. You're gonna let it dry. You could even use like stencils. I mean, you could really draw anything on these and do the same thing that I'm doing. I was inspired by seeing some like metal kind of sign that look like this. So here we go, here's both of them. Now taking these wood pieces I got from Hobby Lobby. Y'all, this is like a four pack, I think it's $3.99. They were 50% off, so it was way less than a dollar for each of them, or not way less, but you get what I'm saying. Then taking these spindles I got from Facebook Marketplace. You guys know I'm obsessed with Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> I cut those down to size. Now we're gonna take the linen white chalk paint and we're gonna paint everything white, everything white. The only thing that um, things that are gonna get two coats are the front of these boxes and the spindles since they were darker. Now, I didn't mind that the black was kind of popping through um, with the puff paint, but I didn't, I, I wanted to add gray, so that's why I decided to do two coats instead of one on the puff paint side, but it's gonna be preference for you. Um, imagine you guys, you can do these, like if you have a modern theme or something like geometric shapes, anything. Now taking that uh, steel gray, I am just seriously flicking the stencil brush like back and forth and distressing this down. And um, like I've said, uh, uh, Tara, she says, uh, don't, don't stress, de-stress, de-stress, don't stress. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, anyways, 
So let's go ahead and distress all of these down and you will see once we get to um, this part, oh, it just makes the puff paint like pop out at you and oh, I love it. Okay, so now taking our wood pieces on the bottom, I am going to draw an X, easy peasy to find our middle spot. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for the bottom of our wood sign uh, our wood boxes. And this is going to let us know where to put our spindles. So taking the spindles, I'm gonna use this wood glue from Dollar Tree. We're gonna put it on the outer edge and then I'm gonna put hot glue in the middle of it. Now you might think there's no way this is gonna hold, but let me tell you, I have made other um, candle stick holders before. I'll link that video down in the description box. And I use the wood glue and the hot glue and those things are so sturdy. I still use them in my living room today and I can validate it works just fine. So now taking the wood glue again, we're doing the same thing, a circle, some hot glue in the middle, and then make sure you get that upper box lined up with the bottom square so you have a nice straight line. And we're gonna do the same thing for this side. And that is it for this project. And you guys, you can use these as candle holders or you'll see how I displayed them. I just put some greenery in there. And I think this is nice. Look at, I was thinking, oh my gosh, these would work for coastal farmhouse as well because it looks like a sand dollar. I love it and I love the detail of the spindles. Y'all go to Habitat for Humanity garage sales and pick up some spindles, okay? All right, so our last one, we are gonna take, this is the pie pan. This is like the smaller version, I think, cause there's the deeper one I've used previously, um, but this one is the smaller. I don't, I don't know what pan is what pan, but we are going to cover the entire thing with white linen chalk paint. I am gonna do two coats on the inside of it, but we will be covering the outside. So. I only do one coat out here. Now, my pro my thinking process behind the Mod Podge was that glue doesn't like to adhere to metal. So maybe if I put the barrier of chalk paint and Mod Podge, I would have a better chance with it adhering and not peeling off of my metal pie pan. So I'm gonna finish doing that, let it dry. I don't put it in the um, top part because no matter if Mod Podge says it's matte or not, it's not. And surprise, we are using our bath mat again, y'all. So we are gonna cut a strip of this off. And I know a lot of you said in my Dollar Tree hauls that you ended up picking some of these up, so good for you. And if you haven't, pick them up, cause I'll be using them a lot. All right, so I am gonna cut a strip off. And in this strip, I am making sure that I get the bigger circle and the one smaller circle that is right beneath it, okay? And then I'm, I play around with the placement and realize I need to cut this down a little bit more. So what I do is I cut half of that smaller circle off and then it fits perfectly on the side of this pan. So we're gonna hot glue this on. Make sure when you're hot gluing, don't put the hot glue in that big circle because it puffs out. So it's not gonna adhere to anything. You need to make sure you're putting the hot glue around the circle and on all of like the connector points that are nice and straight. And this adheres so nicely to this. And I'm gonna take it all the way around doing the same thing. We're just gonna hot glue. Don't worry what it looks like now with the hot glue under it because we will be covering it. So the one strand didn't fit, so you will have to grab another piece, just cut it down to size the same way we did before, hot glue that baby right on there, and then we are going to come back in with that Rust-Oleum Linen White, and we are gonna cover the clear up. You can even use a different color too if you wanted to. So I am just taking a chip brush. I like doing the tip chip brush for these because the bristles get in all of like the little nooks and crannies um, in the design. And after that, you guessed it, we're gonna take the still gray once again, my mini um, plaid chip brush, and we are going to distress it. Now, if you're not into distressing, I get it, but with something like this, it really does make the details pop out at you so you can really see all the dimension that's there. 
All right, so we need legs for this little baby. So uh, race car time. Um, so pulling in the the whole beaded thing we had going on, I am going to place, uh, these are I think 20 millimeter balls, um, beads, wood beads, whatever. On the bottom of this, I am not, I have no idea how far apart I'm putting these. I'm just eyeballing it. I am gonna paint these white, distress them with the gray, and then we have ourselves a cute little, I guess it would be like a, a tray, right? I don't know, but super cute. I love all of the detail that the bathtub mat adds to this. Do you see that? How beautiful is this? I love it. Let me know what you think of this with the bath mat and if you've purchased one. All right, you guys, that is it for the DIYs today. Thank you for joining me. Make sure you like, subscribe. If you're digging the channel, digging me in the DIYs and make sure you go down to the description box and check out Kathy Joe's video for today and her channel. Have a good one. Oh, look at her girl be cut on here. Like a hot mess trying to make this easy. But I'm making it harder on myself. I just adjusted all of that. Get your life together. Okay. That's not. Mm. I needed that. Oh. Be interesting to watch a video to see how other people eat things. I'm sure there's a video somewhere on YouTube. And no. Are you too tired? Are you tired, Mommy? Oh, you look tired. Oh, yeah. Exhausting. Oh, you too? Rough morning? Rough morning just laying there? I see that tail. I see it. I see you going. There's my pretty face, huh? Look at the old boy. Is that your little tonguey? Look at you. Yeah, you too. <clears throat> Hank. Hank. Ay, ay, ay. Those of you that love Hank so much, yesterday we left to go pick up Everly and he ate an entire box of cookies. And I mean an entire box of cookies. And a whole pack row of Thin Mints and these like coconut cookie things. He ate it all. He's okay. I, however, almost lost my damn mind. Excuse my language. Is damn even a bad word? It's like saying darn. Okay. Okay, stop. Just, just. Boom. Bad. Break time. Because I sit down, you want outside, huh? I know it. You're going to have to wait, young lady. Talking to my dog, not my daughter or anything. Okay. No chocolate? No chocolate. Okay.